Hey, my name is Travis, and I'm going to be talking today about the onboarding journey into the Web3 ecosystem. So uh, I've created these next several videos to help specifically product designers who want to understand the the foundations of Web3, potentially get their foot in the door and get a job in, in this space. Uh, I personally have been doing a lot of research in my personal time to uh, get a better understanding of Web3 because I think that this is the future and that it's really going to revolutionize things. So I want to consolidate everything I've learned over the past year or two and condense it and present it in a way specifically for product designers to understand. A lot of the material that I had run into is either for investors, like surface level information and in which projects to uh, invest your money into, or it's designed for people who want to get into blockchain development. So it's very technically in the weeds. And uh, this design curriculum that I have planned is more intermediary, okay? So today I've structured this video just as an introduction. And uh, I want to talk about the different steps, the user journey of a first time Web3 user onboarding into the ecosystem. OK, so these are the four main entities here or locations slash destinations, however you want to think of that. You've got your traditional bank. You've got a crypto exchange or a centralized crypto exchange. You've got your Web3 wallet, and one of the most popular pieces of software for this is MetaMask. So, so that's that cool geometric looking fox right there. And then we have the Web3 ecosystem. And when I say Web3 ecosystem, I mean the ecosystem that's made up of all the different decentralized applications that are built on different blockchains. It could be Ethereum, it could be Solana, Cardano, whatever you want to think about. It could even be Bitcoin in the future. But these are applications that run that are running a decentralized backend using blockchain technology. OK, so let us get into it right here. We have the first step is is connecting your bank account to a crypto exchange and then purchasing crypto in the crypto exchange. And uh, I called this early a centralized crypto exchange because this is a a regulated company. Uh, if you've heard of companies like Coinbase, this is has just gone public uh, last year in 2021. Uh, Kraken and uh, Crypto.com and some others, obviously. Gemini is another one. Um, and these are centralized companies, so they're regulated by whichever jurisdiction they are incorporated in. So the uh, Coinbase, for example, it was corporate, incorporated in the U.S., so it is subject to government regulation, and we'll see the implications for that later on here. But just understand that you're basically converting your fiat currency like U.S. dollars or any other fiat denomination into cryptocurrency assets like Bitcoin and Ether, which we see right here. OK, so the second step, you are going to need to create a Web3 wallet. And this is going to be a very new experience for a lot of people, especially first time users. Um, but you, you create this wallet. And once you have this wallet, then you can transfer your cryptocurrency in the centralized exchange into this Web3 wallet. And uh, so I could put a dividing line right here, just a vertical line that would be differentiating between um, the centralized world over here and then the decentralized Web3 world. Again, going back to what I was talking about before with uh, a, this crypto exchange as a centralized entity, they are Coinbase is custodying your crypto. If the government wanted to come in, then they could seize or freeze your cryptocurrency. But when you move it into a Web3 wallet, you are now self custodying your crypto. No one can seize it. No one can touch it, even the government. And you're protected through uh, cryptography, which we'll talk about a little more 
uh, later on at a high level. I'm not going to ever get into super technical weeds, but um, I will try to explain some backend technologies that are happening to uh, help you guys form a mental model so that you can be more effective designers in the space. Okay, so uh, in this next video here, we're going to pause and just talk about what you can do with a cryptocurrency wallet. You can uh, manage your crypto assets, obviously. You can, um, let me undo this one. You can send crypto to other wallets and it's, it's this like decentralized, anonymous, permissionless bank vault. And I'll get into what each of those adjectives mean in another video, but just understand that it is this, this bank vault, your personal bank vault that you're custodying your crypto with. And it can do many other things too that won't even, I won't really cover in this video series, but it gets into what the Web3 ecosystem is creating and all the different emerging categories within it, like decentralized social media, uh, your digital identity, your art bank vault. I know, I'm sure you guys have heard of things called NFTs. So a lot of people have been uh, converting their artwork into NFTs and now you can actually own these digital pieces of art and you can own them in your crypto wallet, okay? So that's not gonna be in this series, but I do really want to cover it later on because it's just so very interesting. Uh, so moving on here, let me go to the next step here, which is, you know, you have your crypto in your Web3 wallet, and now you're actually going to take your Web3 wallet out into the greater Web3 ecosystem. So this was the, uh, the categories that I just described, decentralized social media, digital identity, decentralized finance, crypto media, um, GameFi, like gaming finance, so you can earn crypto just through playing games. All of these are new emerging category categories that are coming out right now and they are powered by the underlying technology which is blockchain we're going to be mostly focused on the ethereum blockchain in this series but understand that you can generalize these concepts to many other blockchains they're different in some ways but they're very similar in many ways so the last step here is to take your Web3 wallet into this Web3 ecosystem and connect it so that it can access your crypto and you can use your crypto for payment and use these decentralized applications. So um, I'm very excited about this video series and I hope to create good solid mental models in your mind about you know what Web3 is, just give you some foundational knowledge show you some common design patterns like what a centralized exchange looks like and what you can do within a Web3 wallet and then also connecting that Web3 wallet into decentralized applications. So uh, I really look forward to it and thank you for watching.